Welcome to Utique Lifestyle. This is the wardrobe planning series in collaboration with So Much Fabric, where fabric is sewn into fashion. In this video, I'm going to show you how I created the sewing pattern for my black classic t-shirt. I will be using this rayon knit jersey to sew the t-shirt. And since I'm taking the time to sew a t-shirt, I wanted to make sure I was sewing a quality item. So I gathered a few t-shirts in our household and started studying and comparing them. This t-shirt I've had for almost eight years and I use it to dye my hair in. It's just very durable, it's comfortable, and as you can see here, it was a pre-shrunk 100% cotton fabric. I flipped it inside out to study the inside of the shirt and I noticed the binding went across both shoulders and the back neckline. I also noticed there were no side seams to this t-shirt so there must have been a special machine to cut this shirt. If you know how they did this please share it in the comment section below. Because there were no side seams I thought this added to the quality of the shirt making it less of a chance of coming apart. This is my son Big J's t-shirt and I noticed the seams were a different color from the shirt itself. I thought maybe they were trying to match the shirt letters. Let me know what you think. Also the neckband was a little flimsy and when I flipped it inside out, the stitches were exposed and standing up and that's when I realized the previous t-shirt had edge stitching on it. This t-shirt did have neck binding across the shoulder and neck and it is soft and 100% cotton. This shirt is sentimental to me. I got this shirt in Vegas celebrating my friend's birthday. I noticed there is neck binding across the shoulder and neck. Again, there are no side seams to this t-shirt. And what I found interesting was there were no neck band seam, sewing the neck band ends together. There must be a special machine for this. So again, if you know how they did this, please comment in the section below. I was just mesmerized by this. The seams on this was very narrow and there were no edge stitching to this. This t-shirt is 100% cotton and it's very durable. I had it for almost five years. This is my husband's running t-shirt and it has neck binding across the shoulder and neck. The serging stitches were interesting because I couldn't see the edge of the fabric where they connected. It was just very clean on the inside. And this is a dry fit fabric, which is 100% polyester. Again, this must have been sewn with a special machine, and if you know, please leave a comment. I use this t-shirt to clean and lounge around the house in. It is a super soft t-shirt and has binding along the neck only. There are no binding at the shoulder seam, so you can see the loose threads. This shirt isn't the best quality, but it is very comfortable. It is made of 95% cotton and 5% spandex. I recently received this t-shirt when I finished my first marathon. So this is going to be a sentimental shirt. This t-shirt had neck binding along the shoulder and neck. It's a dry fit, 100% polyester. When we first received it, I made a comment to my husband that this had a feminine cut to it. So I decided to use this shirt to make the sewing pattern for the classic black tee. In conclusion, I know I wasn't able to duplicate all the quality aspects of the t-shirt. For example, the no side seams along some of the t-shirts and the special serging stitches. However, I knew I wanted to use my serger and do neck binding along the shoulders and the neck and also do edge stitching along the neckline so that the neck band would be stabilized. So the first thing I did was I put on the t-shirt and pinned it along the sides. I made sure it was the exact fit I wanted and also there was plenty of ease to enjoy food. I did the minor alterations and it was exactly how I wanted it to fit. Now that I got the perfect fit, I am ready to create the pattern. Here I'm just using my children's drawing paper and I'm going to trace along the seams. Here I'm transferring the front and the back neckline and then I'm just going to do the sleeves next. For the sleeve hem I'm using 5 8 inch seam and then a 4th inch seam allowance for the rest. I'll connect the markings and then label. Again 5 8 inch seam for the hem and 1 4th of an inch for the side seams. Here I made note of the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Again start connecting the markings and then cut the pattern. 
decided to make a separate paper pattern for the back of the shirt. So I'm just going to transfer the neckline and the hem, and then cut. I mark the center fold lines for both of the front and back bodice, and label the pattern pieces, and then trimmed off the front neckline. Next is the neckband. With the measuring tape standing vertically up, I started at the left side shoulder seam and then went around and came back to the shoulder seam. To calculate the cutting length of the neckband, I took the 22 inches times 0.85, which turns out to be 18.7 inches. Thank you, Do It Better Yourself YouTube channel. This was a great tip, and I'll link their channel down below. Next is the width. I measured 3 fourths of an inch and I doubled that because of the fold over, so it is 1 and a half inches in width. So my neckband pattern is 18.7 inches in length by 1 and a half inches in width. Now we're ready to measure the binding. I just take it from shoulder to neck to shoulder and I measured 15 inches. For the width, I measured half an inch and I added a fourth inch seam allowance, which made it 3 fourths of an inch and then I doubled that for a fold over. So the total width is one and a half inches. So my neck binding pattern is 15 inches in length and one and a half inches in width. Now I'm complete with the pattern pieces and I'm ready to cut the fabric. Feel free to watch the rest of the series for the classic black tee. If you enjoyed this video, please click like, subscribe, and don't forget to ring the bell for future videos. Thank you for visiting and I hope you got inspired to create something extraordinary out of the ordinary.